guys. Um, so today we have another MTG Deck Tech with Chris. Uh, today we'll be having wet control with Kruga. Uh, Kruga obviously will be our companion. So as you can see, uh, one of the main things about this deck is being able to uh, get card advantage to Kruga, but then but we also have this ley line Kruga combo where uh, you know our ley lines are cheaper than sex, obviously. Uh, and their enchantments to stick to the board and count for Kuga to draw us a card. And um, there are a lot of synergies uh, to this deck. It basically plays like a blue white control list. Uh, the main difference, however, is um, obviously you can't play any one uh, two convert mana cost spells, but um, your higher end stays very similar. Uh, I cut one to fairy, however, for one Elspeth. We'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, that's kind of mainly what the deck does, right? It's just a blue white control with Kuruga. I really like it because one of the main things about uh, blue white control is that, especially uh, currently in the Pioneer metagame, uh, it, sometimes you get to the late, later games and you're, you just start trading one for one and then you will run out of uh, spells. You know, you kind of, because of the, because of how good the spells are, in, for example, Black Red or on all these other decks like, you know, Mono Green and so on, you'll notice that most of the creatures are pushed in this format. Like, the, creature, the creatures are really, really good and the spells are, you know, they're all right. They're not that great. So what happens is that almost every spell that they play requires an answer because it's just, it, it's it's game winning right but then the spells are not really um you know there is no like game winning spell in blue white per se like um it'll take you know a bunch of turns for you to win versus you know a you know a four or five that transforms and gains you life it's, it's pretty absurd so um that's one of the main things I wanted to fix. Uh, so one is like card advantage wise. The other one is the aggro matchup. Um, and why don't we go through the cards and then that way we can kind of understand what's going on. Um, so obviously, we, uh, as I explained at the beginning, we have ley lines and we have uh, two plane cycle guys from uh, March of the Machines. Uh, I like the plane cycle guys. They go well with the ley lines because they allow you to fetch for any planes. As you can see, all, all our triomes, uh, they're all planes, right? And then I'm playing one Godless Shrine um, because in the sideboard I have on on, on more eagle. Um, so let me explain to you a little bit the reasons why. So when you play cycle for one of these lands, you can late game you can either cycle it, or it's also just a three four removal spell, which tends to be very good. Um, but then at the same time is uh, getting getting a triumph also allows you to lay line for cheaper so sometimes you can draw one of these and then go plain cycle for another one and then just if you're holding two ley lines now they cost two usually the ley lines cost two to three um, mainly what I'm shooting for is like for a ley line to cost two um, but three is actually a very acceptable removal spell like combat mana cost for a removal spell because in this format um there aren't that many uh instant speed removals uh at three the thing about ley line mainly in this deck is that it also adds a draw with kroga so you kind of get to do both things at the same time right um so i put two of these perhaps you might like just playing one and then making the other one another spell. Um, I so far I, I played with um, I played with two and they have they have performed as expected. Uh, some some of the times towards the late game I did wish that it was a, a win condition or a way to draw cards. Um, but at three four that removes a creature, it's very helpful at like answering your opponent and two for one in your opponent because a lot of decks would go very low against you, uh, especially um, especially when they need to uh, especially when they just need to interact with you because they know that towards the later towards the later end of the game you're just gonna outdraw them with Kuruga. 
Okay. Um, so another uh, thing to talk about lands is that you know you're obviously able to cycle a lot of your lands, which is very good late game. Um, they do come in tap, but we have but most of our uh, cards, like most of our lands, do come into play on tap. Uh, there's like just like basically glacial forges always come in on tap because everything is like white or blue. We only play two field of ruins. Perhaps this should go down to one and then maybe add another uh, land spell, meaning like perhaps a second Hall of Storm Giants or a second Castle Bantress or a second um, Engajo. Um, so, um, yeah, the four glacial forges are amazing. Um, you, we might want to add, uh, we might want to change the mana base a little bit because this is, I, I did like a quick rough draft of the mana base and it's been pretty good. But I do think that if I had, for example, like one, um, one shock land of the blue black one or um, another shock land for the blue red one or white red one or so on. Uh, it would be useful because it will let it will let our ley lines be a lot cheaper, uh, more often, right? So uh, I do think that's something to keep in mind. And um, feel ruin has been good, right? But it hasn't been amazing. Like I think, uh, I I think what like the way the the removal in this deck is set up, you actually don't get to use a lot of it on creatures because you have so many board wipes, which is what we're gonna go into. Um, okay, and then we just have your usual blue white control lands like Ottawara, Hall, and then Castle. Also, the fourth damage uh, land, right? Okay. Um, obviously, we don't have any one or two drops, um, but I did want it to. Uh, I, I didn't want those turns or that mana to go to waste. Um, th that's also like the reason why there's so many tap lands. Uh, it's because you know you're not doing anything on your turn one or two most of the time, right? So when you're not doing anything, you might as well take advantage of it by playing like a tri land that um, makes your lay lines cheaper, right? Um, but what I did think about was that um, there are pseudo two combat mana cost spells. So like Shark Typhoon is not like a pseudo, um two drop but if you really need to draw a card then you know you can obviously on turn two so that also kind of helps right but uh, what i was re referencing was um bracing power so this is a card that's actually been decent as a one-off perhaps two off wouldn't wouldn't be bad at all because you do get a threat as a three one which in later games is really good not only that it doesn't die to temporary lockdown like it doesn't get exiled and it's good to answer anything your opponent plays. So like it can bounce, uh, you know, any permanent. So any planeswalkers or anything that you have trouble with, you know, you can bounce it, draw your counter spell, and then counter it on the way down. Or in later games, you know, you can bounce it, you know, counter it as well. Or play in such a way that, you know, bounce something, you know, get in for damage, kill something. So um, I really like uh, Brace and Brower. Uh, it's something else to consider. The other, uh, the other cards that I was referencing as a two drop uh, was the Saw It Coming, right? Which you can foretell, and then the Behold Some Multi Universe. And that's the main reason like why I'm not playing Memory Deluge. Memory Deluge is really good. It's a lot better than Behold the Universe. But I think in this deck, since you want to take advantage of your turn two, and there's not a lot of ways to do it, I think Behold the Multi Universe kind of gives you that edge where you're not doing anything on turn two, so you take advantage on it by foretelling it, and then it only costs two, right? And the fact that it costs two is really big because later on you can, you know, play Absorb and have that as as a backup spell, or you can, you know, Supreme Verdict and then you know cast your cast your draw spell. So uh, overall, it, it it plays very well with the deck. Um, so on our uh uh three slot we have temporary lockdown so this card is actually really huge there's a lot of uh, red white tokens going around and temporary lockdown just wipes them out it's also really insane against uh obviously any creature decks you know like uh spirits and so on but it does a really good job at catching you at bringing you back into the game because what happens very often is like you're not doing anything on turn one turn two turn three like you're not actually affecting the board right because a lot of a lot of your spells just are not affecting the board that's why i was saying like basin borrower 
we should consider that. So uh, since we're not affecting the the board state, temporary lockdown kind of just wipes, just resets the board for you, which is something uh, you often do need. So a fourth one wouldn't be like out of this world. You know, I would definitely consider adding a fourth one. Uh, I actually want to add the fourth one to the sideboard, but temporary lockdown is definitely necessary in this deck. And it's also very, very good. As we watch the games later on uh, and we go through it, you're, you're going to see how important temporary lockdown is. Um, okay, uh, our next uh, spell is Thirst for Meaning. So <laughs> this is a card, actually, that at the beginning I didn't think much about, but I think it's really, really good. And again, we might want to add the second one, um, perhaps over this... Um, Alabaster, the plane cycling guy, right? Because what happens is that I didn't realize how many enchantments we have, but we actually have a really big amount of enchantments. Because you have temporary lockdown, you have you have three temporary lockdown, you have three shark typhoon, and you have four ley line binding. So that right there is like ten out of your you know thirty three spells. So it's uh or th thirty four spells, right? So it's it's a it's a decent amount. And since you're drawing three, you're always bound to have one. Temporary lockdown is usually like a card that you're gonna be casting, so you're most likely not going to be discarding it. But I can see like perhaps in a place where you have too many in hand, too many board wipes, you discard one and then keep the other cards. So uh, it's definitely something to consider. I've been testing it out. It's been fine. Uh, the one matchup where I had it, it, it wasn't that good, but um, I, I, I can see how going on turn three, just passing and then drawing is could be really good. Uh, we have the Norsets because they are able to find your Supreme Verdict and your Temporary Lockdown as well as any threat in this deck. Right, because we don't have any creatures in the deck, but the, the the also the ability to stop your opponent from drawing cards. It's very, very important, and it's very, very good. It's really good against Fable, because your opponent, you know, plays Fable, and then you play Narset, and then, you know, he can hit he can hit the Narset, but then at the same time, is they don't get to draw cards, which is very important, and then you still get to replace itself, right? You still get a threat out of it. So it's it's so good. And you can also have these setups where you play a Shark Type, you cycle a Shark Typhoon, play Narset, or... It, it, the fact, the ability to stop your opponent from drawing cards, it, it's always coming up, and you'll you'll notice it as well uh, when we play the matchups. As I said, absorbs is a is a way to kind of control the deck. So that's one of the things is that this deck is not huge on counter spells. It was only playing four counter spells because you just want to counter like the key cards that will be troublesome for you. And in the later game, you kind of want some uh, insurance, right? Because as you go. Your opponent's also going to draw cards and they're also going to have spells. And then they're playing off the top of the deck. But being able to just like play a Planeswalker and then um, protect it is very important. And that's kind of like what Absorb does. And that's the same thing for Soil Coming, right? Obviously, we spoke about the Foretell. And Soil Coming is also a card that, um, you know, perhaps you might want a second one. Because the fact that these are just hard counted spells and, you know, they're not conditional makes them really good because they're on from turn three on right and remember you're board wiping from turn uh from turn three prior so the board is going to get reset so the, the counter spells do get better as as the game goes on um the wandering emperor is really good card um three has been really good number four i think uh, would be fine, and if I were to play a fourth one, I will cut it over the Teferi. Um, I'll go into Teferi in a little bit, um, but uh, talking about the Wandering Emperor, it's been insane. I mean, just being able to excel something and gain life is very important, but then also just the two twos are such a big way to pressure your opponent's planeswalkers and just pressure your opponent in general. Um, uh, well, we talk about Behold the Multi Universe and how good Fortel is on turn two, how it's important also to just like draw cards to refill your hand, right? Especially when you're trading one for one, like countering your opponent's stuff or like just you know wiping the board, it's important to draw into your win conditions. Um, Supreme Verdict, uh, it's in the, it's also very, very necessary. So you might be thinking like, oh, you know, you have temporary lockdown. Why do you need four Supreme Verdict? You should probably go lower on Supreme Verdict. But the thing with Supreme Verdict is that it's uncountable, but then at the same time, it's like it gets rid of the cards that temporary lockdown doesn't. And since you're, you, you, your, your win conditions are based on planeswalkers, you want the, the board to be clear until you can stick a 
you know, a thread that produces creatures or a way to protect them, right? So it, it's always important to continue to wipe the board. The main thing too is that your opponent uh, doesn't expect for you to be wiping the board that often, right? Like they, 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 they might play around the first Supreme Verdict. They might play, a, uh, you know, they might play around, around, around the first Supreme Verdict and then the second one is even more devastating than the first one because the first one they'll play around it right up to the point where they can and then the second one you know they can't they can't any longer like just you know re like reward you reward you with time so they have to like amount pressure on you so then they just they let go right they just dump their hand and then that's when you're able to some pre-verdict for a second time and then just you know not, not only as a way of card advantage but it's also like a way to control the, the the board state. So this is this is the way kind of how you impact the board the board state, and you keep it clear for your for your planeswalkers. And that's why the Wandering Emperor is also so good, right? Because you're able to stick a threat at instant speed, while also dealing with the board state. So um, that that I that's one thing I really love about this deck. Um, even though it's a little bit slower, it is good at just coming back from these uh, from these spots where you know you're. You'll see, you'll get into trouble, right? Teferi, so this is one of the main things. I have Teferi in here. You know, every blue white control this plays Teferi. And then I, I think we're kind of in this space where we, we, we believe that Teferi is really good, right? Because it untaps the lands. And, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a card that has definitely shown that it's, it's worth a spot. Um, it gives you card advantage and it deals with a threat, even minus three. Um, but the issue with Teferi, and this is the main thing, is that... Uh, so the counter spells, like for example, in other blue white lists, they're not hard counter spells, right? So and you, you're drawing cards, but then the cards that you're drawing don't aren't that impactful, right? They're not like securing you, uh, uh, like 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 a like a safety insurance or anything like that. And on top of that is like just drawing one card when it comes into play, it's not it's not gonna win you the game. Like it might it it, it put it doesn't even like put you ahead. In a big way it just slightly puts you ahead and the issue is that like i said before the creatures are so good now like the the, the creatures have been so uh over overpowered that teferi just seems as a, a it, it just makes the fairies look like a normal card and you have to remember like it doesn't come down until turn five so when you're holding multiple teferis in hand it turns to be like really really bad um i am playing two but i wouldn't like judge anybody for going down to one because it has teferi hasn't really been um I, and i'm a big advocate for teferi like i play teferi in modern but and i noticed that over over the long term teferi has been getting worse and worse and worse just because the creatures have been getting better and better and better and teferi is not too good at dealing with those things like the minus three ability is good but it leaves it almost dead so you know you don't really have a lot of space for um to just like you know keep drawing cards turn after turn after turn so and also the ultimate is pretty far away like the ultimate is like three or four turns away so it's hard like you have to have complete control right and at that point if you have complete control of the game then you probably to very is just like a win more card at that point you can play any card and then you'll probably win the game, right? It's not. It's, it, it, this is the thing. Is Teferi and Pioneer is not a card that will flip a game around. It's a card that would uh, advance your advantage by a bit, but it's not. It's not gonna flip a game that you're losing and make it make it a winning game. Um, and that's why I went down to two, and where the spot where there used to be three on the third spot, I switched it for Elspeth. Because one of the main things about Elspeth is that against creature decks, it just makes three one ones, and then it's hard for them to just get through that. Against a big creature decks, you can minus four and just wipe the board. So it's another board wipe, which is very, very important and also very good. Uh, but then the ultimate, right? The ultimate is like three turns away. So it's not as far as four as the fairy, right? So the, the main thing is also that the, the ultimate of Elspeth wins the turn that game. Like it doesn't win it on the next draws or you know like it wins it wins the game that turn like the turn you ultimate you win so it, it's also very like that's also very important why i picked elspeth over it and i love the fact that um you know with narset you can find all these different threats and then they're very good 
And Teferi would also feel a lot better in a deck where you're able to cast uh, like two combat mana cost spells uh, a lot easier. Like since we're in a Karuga deck, we don't have that many twos, right? Like we can't foretell at instant speed. Um, so uh, for those reasons, Teferi is not that great. Uh, um, I, I, matter of fact, if you, I recommend you to try a fourth Wandering Emperor over the second Teferi, and let me know how that goes in the comments. Um, okay, so late lines, uh, I think we spoke about them. They're just amazing, and in this in in this format, it's really good because it answers everything: planeswalkers, creatures, creature lands, and um, at the same time, three mana for a you know remove something is completely fine. Um, one thing that I suggest work on the mana, try to make the mana work a little bit better and let me know. I'm not I'm not great at this stuff, so it's only a really rough draft. Um definitely need a lot of expertise and a lot of help with this, but I think overall it's been really, really good. Uh, Shark Typhoon, as I said before, is just a way, great way to have a spell that you can play uh at instant speed, like a creature you can cast at instant speed and then draw your cards. It's, it's amazing. Uh, but then at the same time, late game, you know, you can play it and then just cast your spells onto it. So um, you'll notice that uh, Shark Typhoon in this format is also really good against the token deck. Like if you put it on two and one and then you just jump for a turn, it buys you enough life where, um, you know, you can Veredict or you can, you know, temporarily lock down the next turn and just survive it. From then on, you can win. Um, all these threats uh, like Shark Typhoon, Ley Line, Temporary Lockdown, Narset, uh, Wandering Emperor, and Teferi really help Karuga just take over the game once you play it. One of the main things about it, and some of the mistakes that I've done uh, first playing this deck, has been like just putting Karuga in my hand when uh, the format is like obviously a Thoughtseize format. And you know, it's gonna get like you should probably try to put it in your hand and play it or play the next turn, but don't put it in your hand just to try to save three mana. Um, because most of the time I'll get Thoughtseize, and I think, I, I, I'm pretty sure I lost the game because of that, um, because Karuga just, is gonna draw you a, a lot of cards, so it's gonna draw you two to three cards on average, I believe, um, and that's been the case for me, too, so, even when it just replaces itself and you draw just one card, I mean, you remember, your deck is just, it's so good at finding your threats, you know, like, you have Nars said, Behold the Multi of Universe, Terrors for Meaning, um, even Shark Typhoon, that, you know, Teferi, they all draw you into more cards, so you're gonna be able to find a threat if they're not a threat themselves, right? So, that's one thing to say, so. On the sideboard, we'll go over, really quick over the sideboard, so we have three Mystical Disputes, we have two Mystical Disputes, uh, and one Hole Breaker for the counter matchups, you know, the matchups where you wanna be, uh, you know, interacting at that level. Hole Breaker is, like, really insane against any counter deck. Um, that's very obvious, it can be countered. And then Farewell is against those matchups. Like, I don't bring it in a lot, especially uh, especially against the token deck, because it's like, uh, against the token deck, there's they're just really fast, right? So being able to Farewell on 6, it's really, like, if you're casting a spell on 6, and you're probably already in a really good position, and you probably have wipe, or wipe, like at least one or twice. But the thing is that Farewell doesn't really help you out um, do much like i i, I put it I, I, like i put it there because mainly it exiles the graveyards right so against like grease fang and decks like that where you want your graveyard to exile the graveyards is good but i uh i think it should definitely get cut and perhaps uh, you know play with another card the tension sphere is a card that i believe is really good i think this card is under underplayed it's another spell for karuga right but then at the same time it's like it gets rid of planeswalkers, it gets rid of creatures, and then it gets rid of creatures that uh, are played more than once. So some of those creatures tend to be, uh, for example, mono green, like land with elves, right? Like your opponent always plays like, more than one land with elves, or if, you know, if they have them, they'll play them. And it's really good at answering them. Second of the, uh, the second one is tokens. Like when your opponent makes like three one ones, or they make like multiple one ones, or they make two twos, it's a great way to just deal with those threats, right? And then you're dealing with all of them at once. So it's the tension sphere might even make the main deck because um, 
it's again it's really good with Karuga drawing you cards. So these enchantments are very important because they you know they keep uh not only helping you uh you know uh advance your board state in the sense of like you know you are you're getting you're in control of the board state but also adding another card to your hand when you play Karuga. Uh, Dream Thrower is just a really good card against your life, uh, and then at the same time, it's like really hard for any black deck to deal with. It's just really hard for your opponent to deal with in general because you can give it, you can discard a card and, and give it hexproof. Dovin Beetle, I put it in there for the creativity matchup because you know they can't counter your your Dovin's Beetle, so it, it's just a hard counter to their creativity. And in that case, you know you're most likely going to be alright. Uh, I put Eagle also for creativity matchup, but also for Mono Green. Because if you get rid of their cards, now they have to play a fair game of like, I play my creatures, and then, you know, we'll see where it goes. But then also all these pseudo combo decks, like Grease Fan or any, uh, like Hidden Strains and so on. Um, it's really nice to be able to deal with a threat that, you know, is most impactful to you. And I would say I would try it out even in decks that you think are a little bit slower, right? That are not going to kill you right away. Because you do, you have to think about the deck itself. The deck is really good at surviving. You have a lot of board wipes, so you're going to live for a decent amount of time. So when you're taking their most impactful threat, right? You are you you are like advancing the board in, in that sort of state because you're going to continue drawing cards. Your opponent is also going to continue drawing cards as the game gets longer. So if you're able to you know take away the cards that deal with your stuff now you have another safety net right so that's also very important um and and i if you have also another card that perhaps you feel does something similar let me know um and then we have a shock so i i haven't actually boarded it in but i think uh, I didn't. I, I was thinking of rest in peace, right? And rest in peace is definitely like a viable option. And you might be thinking, like, doesn't rest in peace stop you from companion Karuga? That's why you have a shock. Yes, that's one reason I have a shock. But it, what I wanted to allude to was that rest in peace is such a strong card against, like, in the sideboard, especially against the decks that deal with sideboard, that uh, I'd rather have rest in peace and not have Karuga than have Karuga and not rest in peace, right? So this is one one thing to say because when you play it rest in peace is amazing like where the matchups where it's good it's amazing right so it's very impactful so yeah if, if you want to change the a shocks for rest in peace i completely understand um but i also had the a shocks because they stop your like it's really good against uh, uh the bring to light deck right which, which is very random but it's very good and it just stops your opponent from searching for anything like anything that says search you know maybe you feel the ruin them and now you have like a shock and then you're in a good spot uh, but also exiling is also very important, right? Like exi exiling, uh, like the matches where you want to exile graveyards, like a shock is there too. So it's a little versatile while at the same time fitting the like the Karuga, uh companion, um, like side effect. So um, yeah, um, that that's it for this deck. Let me know what you think, and uh, I hope you watch the first round uh, of this match. It's, it's pretty good. We went four and one. We were shy from. Um, getting the five and all trophy, uh, I definitely made some mistakes towards the end. Uh, you'll see it. Um, but it's it's. I believe this deck is very powerful, but it's also in a very good state because in, in the grindy matchups, Karuga pushes you ahead and it's hard for them to deal with. But then you also have really good removal with leyline, and you have really good threats. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Thank you.